If you're watching the news and wondering why are suddenly some of the world's richest people putting their lives on the line to go to space, uh, this video is going to give you the answers. And no, it's not because they don't want to live on this planet anymore, even though this could be an understandable reason sometimes, I guess. Anyway, Richard Branson, the founder of Virgin Group, recently flew the VSS Unity to space in a symbolic moment that will mark the beginning of mainstream space tourism. He beat Jeff Bezos by a few days, who is set to launch himself too, on the Blue Origin's new Shepard rocket. Now the dick measuring contest is in full swing, with Blue Origin saying that they don't actually consider what Richard Branson did as a real space flight. Why is that so? And where does Elon Musk and SpaceX stand compared to these two? Before we figure all this out in this video, please give it a like, it helps my channel tremendously so I can make more videos like this, and if it's not for me, do it for space exploration. The main difference between these three companies is how high in space they can get and what one actually considers as being space. Virgin Galactic flew to an altitude of about 80 km above Earth, which is slightly lower than the so-called Karman Line of 100 km, the official international boundary which marks the beginning of space. But, of course there's a but, most American agencies don't recognize it as such. NASA, the US Air Force, Space Force and the Federal Aviation Administration uh, rather consider 80 km as being that boundary, and pilots who get beyond that receive the title of astronauts. So according to them, Richard Branson actually went into space. But Jeff Bezos plans on breaching the international Karman line by going up to 105 km altitude, slightly higher and longer than what Virgin Galactic can do. The thing is, neither of them is actually going into orbit. What they do is quick suborbital jumps. So the passengers can briefly experience space and have a few minutes to witness the Earth's curvature, which is just enough time to make sure that it's not flat. But going into orbit to fly around the Earth for an extended period of time requires to reach an altitude of at least 200 kilometers, and even then it is considered unstable because of the atmospheric drag. The International Space Station, for example, is located at an average altitude of 400 km. And this is the realm of SpaceX, something that Virgin Galactic will never be able to do and what Blue Origin plans on doing in the future. Because here's the thing, their technologies are vastly different. Virgin Galactic uses a mothership plane called EVE, named after the late mother of Richard Branson, to reach an altitude of about 15 km, which then drops the actual rocket ship Unity, it turns on the engine and shoots up to 80 km in space. The goal is to get that rocket ship as high up as possible in the sky, so it can then reach its highest point thanks to the fuel it has on board. Commercial passenger planes fly at an altitude of about 10 km, and it's not really possible for regular planes to go much above 15 km because the air becomes too thin and oxygen levels too low for the engines to burn enough of it. The rocket engine functions differently. It burns the fuel that it has on board, and the less air resistance and gravity there is, the higher it will go. And of course, the other limitation is how heavy of a rocket such a mothership can carry up that high, which means that Virgin Galactic is pretty much limited in what they can achieve next, although they do plan on going higher up and above 110 km altitude eventually by optimizing their spaceships. SpaceX and Blue Origin used the traditional rocket fuel method right from the start to lift their spaceships from the surface of the Earth, and here is the size that matters. One needs bigger rockets which carry more fuel to go ever higher. The limitation here is a certain tipping point after which the rocket itself becomes too heavy to be efficient. And generally, the bigger the rocket, the more complex and dangerous everything becomes. This is currently the realm of SpaceX and the traditional world space agencies. Blue Origin is a small player in this as of today, but unlike Virgin Galactic, they do plan on competing frontally with SpaceX one day by designing heavy rockets as well, such as the new Glenn. Everything here comes down to finances and business models. Virgin Galactic announced that they will sell seats for around $250,000, which is a relatively affordable amount, something that the average Joe can imagine saving up during their lives. Their technology will be the cheapest to allow a lot of people a short thrill ride to space. Think of it as a very, very tall roller coaster. Eventually, Virgin Galactic plans on doing about 400 launches each year and generating more than a billion dollars in revenues per spaceport. Because yes, they count on having multiple spaceports. 
Given that there can be 6 paying clients in a spaceship like Unity, it would suppose that the price of launch would rather reach $400,000 instead of $250,000, so this number is not definite. The task is bold, of course, given that they will need to produce several more ships in order to reach such a turnover. But the demand is real, since they already pre-sold about 600 tickets for about $250,000 each to people like Justin Bieber and uh, Elon Musk. Yep, he did book a seat. At this point, there is nothing preventing Virgin Galactic from operating a successful business of launching tourists on space roller coasters. What Richard Branson did when he flew first was actually a proof of concept. We will probably see regular flights like this in the years ahead, except if a new tragic accident happens like in 2014, which will then postpone the whole process for a few more years. Blue Origin by Jeff Bezos is targeting the same market, with a slight variation of altitude and duration. They didn't disclose the costs of their tickets yet, but one can guess that they will probably be more expensive than Virgin Galactic, just enough to justify the potential extra performance. The only known number so far is 28 million paid by a secret individual, but that price tag is so high only because it's a private ride with the god Jeff Bezos himself. It would obviously not make any sense to pay $27,750,000 more to get just a little bit higher and a little bit longer. For both Virgin Galactic and Blue Origin, a survey found that 39% of people whose net worth is more than 5 million are interested to pay a few hundred thousand dollars for such experiences, which represents a market of about 2.5 million people. And finally, there's SpaceX, of course. Elon Musk didn't ever hitch a ride in his own Crew Dragon capsule, but that's because he chickened out, I mean, no, it's because he doesn't need to do it just yet. SpaceX's main business is not targeting space tourists at all, and therefore there was no need for taking a personal risk to make a proof of concept. If you are interested in how SpaceX actually makes money, just go watch my video called SpaceX Business Model – Disrupting the Space Industry, and then watch my video about Starlink, which wasn't mentioned in it. Now, however, SpaceX always hinted at potential space tourism revenue as well, but they are playing in a completely different league. SpaceX can fly to the orbit around Earth and beyond without any problem, and the costs are obviously substantially higher. Recently, four seats were sold for around $55 million each to bring amateur astronauts and let them stay for 8 to 10 days at the International Space Station. This is not anymore a roller coaster experience, but an actual travel and stay out of this world. 55 million is a lot and is accessible to much fewer people. However, nobody knows how low SpaceX could eventually bring this cost, especially that 7 space tourists already paid about 25 million dollars to get to the International Space Station using the Russian Soyuz capsules, a venture brokered thanks to the company called Space Adventures, and this happened years ago. So space tourism is not at all something new. Of course, flying conditions are not comparable between the Dragon and the Soyuz, but SpaceX doesn't seem to have found an optimal tourism business model here just yet. However, they do have a sub-niche inside the space tourism niche that only they can fill, which is flying around the moon. Russian technology cannot go that far, so it's just a matter of time until SpaceX attempts a mission like this. It will supposedly cost about $150 million per seat, but it would be truly unique. Such an achievement was planned for 2018, but didn't happen. Like with all things Elon Musk, we need to lower our expectations in terms of timelines, but he usually ends up reaching his goals eventually. And I'm not even talking about going to Mars. So Richard Branson did make history by paving the road to the cheapest space flights for entertainment purposes, and hopefully Jeff Bezos will do the same seamlessly. And please, I know many of you don't like him, but do permit him re-entry back to Earth. At least because he helped to save the epic series The Expanse. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, it's free, it will help space exploration, and subscribe to my channel to watch more. See you soon!